Hey friends, we're continuing in through the New Testament. We're now starting a new book called Philippians. And if you're not familiar with this book, this is often called the book of joy. This is the passage or letter that Paul wrote probably from a Roman prison to a church that has a special place in his heart because of how God engineered his calling to change and to go start this particular church or this area to reach this area for Christ instead of what Paul had planned to do. So if you don't know, this is in the book of Acts. You'll find this. Paul has been planting churches along the Eastern European area, the the areas along the Sea of the Aegean Sea and in different places like uh, like Crete and some, Smyrna and some of those. And then he gets to this place where he wants to go east into Asia, more towards the Galatian location, other places east, but God uses a vision to call him west. And instead of heading east like he had planned to do to start more churches, he ends up crossing the Aegean Sea into the area of Macedonia, and he starts this first church in what would be considered Western Europe in a place called Philippi. Philippi was along the sea coast, but he had uh, lots of inroads into it. And it's along the Roman way where they crossed over and sent soldiers back and forth between Rome and other areas of Europe. And uh, Paul starts a church there with a lady, a purple dealer named Lydia, and on and on it goes. It sends his ministry in a completely different direction. Well, here is this church called Philippi. Paul wants to write to them to encourage them while he's sitting in a jail cell in Rome. <laughs> That'd probably be the last place you would feel much joy. You're talking about incarcerated to the point where you're in chains, probably in a dark dungeon, maybe below the ground, struggling to get any kind of supplies or food because the only way you ate is if people from outside would bring you stuff, bring you things to eat. They were mistreated in many cases. And here's Paul in this dungeon in this place, probably orating his letter through Timothy uh, to send to Philippi to tell them to be joyful. Paul shares with them in chapter one a whole lot about his story, and in particular about his emotions, how he's torn between wanting to just, you know, if God calls him home and if this is the end of his life, he desires to go see Jesus again. But he also feels torn because he wants to be there with them and support his churches and reach more people for Jesus and do the work of God on earth. And he's torn between the two. And he finally says, I feel like God is telling me that I'm just going to stay here and continue to do the work, which is great. Then he says in verse 27, whatever happens, whatever happens to me, whether I die, whether I live, whether I'm stuck in prison for the rest of my life or whether I get to be freed and come back to you, whatever happens... You need to conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. It doesn't matter what happens to your life. It doesn't matter what happens to mine. You, because you were saved by grace, need to conduct yourself in a manner worthy of that same gospel. Listen, you and I have sold all of our eggs into one basket, and we've placed it into the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. That particular event is the, our hope for eternity. If there is no death on the cross, there is no payment for sin. We have no hope to live forever. If there is no resurrection, we have no guarantee, and Jesus' promises didn't happen, and so we have no reason to believe we'll ever be saved for eternity. But if those events occurred, which we have hundreds of witnesses to say they did in the Scriptures, and if that is true, which millions and millions and billions of people have believed it to be, then we have a hope worthy of living for. Paul is telling his church in Philippi, you're worried about me, that's fine, I get it, but you don't need to be. Because whether I die or whether I live, I have the hope of eternal life. And you need to live your life in the same way. I'm calling you as a believer of Jesus and myself holding myself accountable to this. We should quit griping and complaining about our life on earth <laughs> and live as if we have the hope of eternity ahead. We should quit living as if it all matters what we get out of this life and realize the eternal life that we gain 
and live for that. We need to live our life worthy of the calling of Christ and the promise of Christ. That because you believe and are saved, you will live forever. Wow. And if that is true, then the people of this life need to learn by our example, by watching us, that there's something far greater to live for. Paul's right, and he has great joy, not because of his circumstances, not because of him being treated justly. That's not the case. He has joy <laughs> because he knows what he's living for. And you and I have that same hope. And praise God, the world responds when they see us living like it. Well, God bless you as you do. We'll see you again next time as we continue through the book of Philippians. It's a great study and an encouraging one for all of us to live our lives worthy of the gospel of Christ. See you then.